Hello, good morning everybody. My name is Kevin and today is Christmas Day 2020. Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, I hope that, yes, I hope <laughs> most of you are all snuggled up, cuddled up, snuggled up, oh, feeling the warmth and the glow of what this day represents um, for many of us, um, <clears throat> particularly Western Hemisphere. I don't know how they celebrate if they do even celebrate in the east um but i'm sure they have their somewhat celebration of life if you will new life which brings me to an interesting um message today um i did my angels the angel guide carl gray right there um well i suppose it should go up Oh, no, it's on this one. The main camera. How interesting is that? And I thought this one up here was. Oh. Let's have a little look, see which one's on. There are my four. K is on. Oh, well. All right, so um, I'm sorry about that. I'm still getting used to all this technology and how it all works and uh, what cameras where. i got to look. Um, I think I said I've put up a tripod um, behind it because this one here was um, on the top of my laptop and it wouldn't stay there it kept sort of sliding and moving so I got its own little tripod up there um, so the card I drew this morning is Forgiveness and understanding. So when the angel of forgiveness and understanding pops up, um, it's basically asking that the heaviness um, and the burdens and the any kind of difficulty, more so what you perhaps may be judging for yourself, um, this is about being worthy. This is about starting all over. And um, if you are, whether it's Christian or Catholic or, you know, uh, of the faith that today Christ is birthday, then um, it's a good time to let go of anything that you feel burdened by in the past. Forgive it and others and just dance in the glory of something new and uh, exciting. I was... Um, talking with a good friend of mine who experienced a tough week and for for many 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 people this week this time this two week period of holiday festivities when we're supposed to celebrate um hang on one second amy you choose the most okay good she's up there um bless her she's got three legs <laughs> and she likes to just perch herself up there on the chair um look out the window but it's dark out there so i don't know if she's seeing something that whoever ah where was i so um yes i was talking to a friend of mine who has experienced a dark week it was a challenging week um many 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 many, many emotions um come up and when they come up it isn't just the one thing that triggers the one thing that it's a catalyst is a lot that comes gushing forward a bit like um the crashing of a wave on the shore it isn't just one little droplet it's a whole tsunami coming and i think that certain main times of the year um holidays uh particularly holidays of giving and receiving and the pretense that we're meant to be of goodwill and good cheer and celebration but yet don't necessarily feel it uh it can bring stuff up so the forgiveness is an understanding is an angel that pops in and says you're worthy and you're worth it and you should forgive yourself and you move on um i was telling my friend when you're stuck in the soup of the sadness you're just stuck in the soup of the sadness comfort zone the ego 
wants to keep that stirring, wants to keep that going. It's what they know. It takes courage to lift up, rise up, open up and forgive. I battle with it. Um, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows, and some weeks are more challenging than others. To get through the challenging of weeks, the best thing is to offload, be still, get quiet, especially a time like this, there's not much you can do. Um, not so much find ways to avoid it, not so much find ways to walk away from it, or to, you know, that's typically what we do, we eat, <laughs> we drink, <laughs> go shopping, we do all kinds of indulgency things to cover up or mask or hopefully make you feel better. That's the point. The point is to understand you are entitled to feel what you feel. You're entitled to be a little heavy, feel a little sad, not bringing that on you today, just to let you acknowledge it and then forgive yourself for whatever it is that you feel sad about. Um, if it involves other people, which typically it does, try to understand what the intention was. Was it intentional? And there are some situations where the other person did want to intentionally inflict pain, intentionally inflict sadness. There are some people out there that are intentionally not so nice. I don't know how you forgive them. You can perhaps say, well, you know, cut the ties that bind me to them. Lift my heart, my mind and my soul up. The goodness in us, the love in us, the understanding in us, the compassion in all of us wants to fix it, wants to make it better, wants to try to understand. And the worst road to go down wants to find a way to figure out what we did. What did we do? How did this happen? Why did this person feel this way? Um, forgive all that. Understand it. It's not you. You'll know if it's you. Um, what's my trigger when I know it's me? Oh, it's very quick. It's very instant. Um, and I own it. I own all of it. I started owning stuff like that hmm, seven or eight years ago. Well, I've done it all my life. Owned the things I felt safe about owning. I thought I wouldn't get judged for. And then the things I was like, oh, I don't think I want to go there. Don't think I'll be telling people that. Mm, yeah, no, not so much. It's a lot, it's freer. It's freer when you do that. It's a lot easier. Um, because it helps to be not intentional about doing it again. Or um, stops a habit from happening. I'm not saying I'm a superhuman being. I have flaws. I make mistakes. Um, they're few and far between. The, when they do pop up, they pop up with a slap. <laughs> um, and does it feel good? I think that's because it is fewer and far between. Um, hmm. All right, I digress. I want to read today. I feel like reading. I feel like, ooh, let's see what Melody Beatty has to say in her book, this um, Journey to the Heart, since we're talking about forgiveness, understanding and love. And it's Christmas Day and you're here and I'm here and let's see where we are. It's almost at the end of this book. I don't, hmm. I'm going to get there, I promise. Sorry, turning pages. Oh, okay. Well, this is good. No instance. Forgiveness and understanding is a card I drew. And then we go to this page. 367 if you've got the book uh, remember faith December 25th there is a church in New Mexico where the ground is said to be holy sacred healing as I sat in a pew in that church I was amazed at the number of the flock there I watched one man carry his sick wife a woman so ill she couldn't walk or stand by herself they came to pray, to touch the holy ground. 
They came for a miracle. I sat, watched and listened in awe of the tremendous power of faith. Many things in life test us. They strain us, deplete us and sometimes leave us without hope. Hmm. Yet there is a place in all of us where the ground is sacred and holy. That place in us is called faith. Remember faith. It's important. Without it, life is dull, useless and joyless. We may have moments when we say, well, what's the use? Nothing will help. We may go through times when we're angry at God and don't want to believe it anymore. But faith has the power to transform us. Faith can still instill joy, bring peace and restore a sense of acceptance and fulfilment in our lives. Faith is a simple place, but it's also a place of profound power. Faith can turn our lives around. Faith may not bring us the miracle we want, but it will bring us the miracle we need. Cultivate faith, touch it, hold it in your hand. In the back of the room of this Sanctuario de Chameo, I'm sorry, I'm not Spanish, I should learn though, is a ground that's said to be holy and healing. Visitors are invited to take some with them. I scooped up a potion, just a tiny bit, placed it in a small plastic bag and put it in my Jeep. Faith. You don't need much. A little bit goes a long, long way. Oh, I've got goosebumps. That's so chilling. I love that. Um, Melody Beatty, the author of this book. I've talked about this before. I don't know the woman. I've met the woman, but the book's pretty profound. I don't even know when this was written, but I would say maybe 20 years ago. Let's have a look to see when the first edition was published. Um, she's written books, The Language of Letting Go, The Lessons of Love, Codependent No More, Beyond Codependency, and Codependence Guide to the Twelve Steps. Um, this was published by Harper One, which is the first one here. 1996. Whew. 1996. Wow. 25 years ago. Incredible. Uh, yeah, yeah, Megan, it's such a good book. Um, it is such a good book when you just feel a little bit laden, like we do. Good one. Let's see what Angel Love from Above brings by Maudy Fowler and Gay. I'll hunt my new acquisition. Let's go to any old page. Oh, look, I love Gail's photograph. She just. <laughs> They're so random. <laughs> there, look, it's a clog. It's just a random yellow clog. Looks like she's placed it outside some kind of store. Um, looks like a building. It could be anything. And then the caption, so appropriate is this, who the shoe fits. <laughs> who the shoe fits. Right, my friends, it is time to meditate. So get grounded, feet on the floor. Um, yeah, for this morning, let's do a nurturing meditation. Put your left hand, right hand, or dominant hand, whatever hand you want. I use my right. Um, I write with my left and do everything else with the right hand. So, and then you um, place your other hand on top. Just a nice little feeling of um, mm. start your breath work. Um, just let your thoughts settle down.
Bring your attention to the soles of your feet grounded into the earth and your thoughts and your attention to the physical environment you're in, the seat, the temperature, um, integrate with where you are. The more detail you put into the thoughts of where you are, the chair, the room, the floor, the building, the street, the less opportunity your ego, your egoic mind, has to wander about. As you give your outside environment a scan, continue to concentrate on the breath coming in, the breath coming out, pulling in love, understanding, forgiveness. As you exhale, let go, release, unburden yourself. If there are matters that come to your mind, that have been on your mind, that have weighed on you, affirm that everything's okay and then let all that go. Just continue with your breath. You can pull in on your inhale breath a mantra, love, peace, abundance, health, or good health. With your hand on your heart, your breath pulling in all the goodness that is you, that's about you, that's available to you. Generate a sense of gratitude and thanks that your higher spirit guides, that your personal guardian angel Archangels, all those entities and energies in spirit that are for your highest good. Open your heart up. It's the gratitude you feel for them being with you. Ask that the doorway to faith be left wide open and that they keep you, your soul, your intention, your purpose grounded, supported by the earth. Lifted by the love of the heavens. Ask that the shackles, ties that bind you to people, places, situations, stories, things, judgments, negative judgments. Gossip, envy, jealousy. 
ask for all those ties that bind you to those situations that energy be cut and give thanks that they're cut right now With this new freedom, you have the choice, the power of choice to choose what to replace the space with. Choose what you wish to fill up on. Have the faith that whatever you choose to fill up on love, harmony, balance, abundance, good health, unlimited resources, unlimited money, have the faith and knowledge that no, to know your higher spirit guides and your angels are here. Their intent, their purpose is to bring you all that you want. Continue breathing in the light that this life has given you, the opportunity it's already rolled out for you. If you're in, tra if you're in transition from one job to the next, one place to the next, one home to the next, one situation to the next, if you're in that transition. Fill up on the faith. Choose the highest guides that guide you forward for your highest good and the highest good of others. Fill up on the faith that all good things are now available to you. Now I invite you to continue breathing and meditating and staying in this peaceful place. When you feel complete, place your hands at prayer, at heart centre. Acknowledge the space that you're in and acknowledge the burdens you've released.
Acknowledge and give humble thanks for all that you will receive. Lift your thumb knuckles up between your eyebrows and together we honour each other, the divine in each other as we say Namaste. Mm. Don't know if there's anything more to add to that. Um, thank you very much. Very simple meditations, very simple, very simple act of being present and acknowledging what's happening and the choice to change it immediately. Um, whenever possible, wherever possible, you will come across people, other people, that will notice the new radiance in you, the new lift, lightness in you, especially now. They may naysay about meditation, they may find it a bit fringy, a bit cringy, a bit weird. But they'll notice the change, they'll notice the lightness and the brightness. Might start with a little comment. How can you be so calm and collective? How can you be so peaceful? How do you stay so this, so that? They're asking the question. Not asking you to school them. Just asking a question. You can share, honestly. Spend my day every morning in lifting and lightening, whatever that looks like for you. Okay, my friends, I will be here tomorrow, 5.30, as usual. Um, and in England tomorrow, it's called Boxing Day. I might explain a little bit about that in the morning, if you don't already know. All right, Merry Christmas. Have a good one. Thanks so much. Bye.